Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Believe it or not, the Smith chart is all about the reflection coefficient as it's related to transmission lines. Because of this, we have to give some attention to this topic. The good news is that the Smith chart does all of the heavy lifting for us. In this video, I will be showing the math associated with the reflection coefficient, but don't let that scare you away. It is more important for you to grasp the concept of the reflection coefficient than it is to be able to do the math. So sit back and work at grasping the concept of what it's all about. Unless, of course, you're one of those inquisitive experimenter who like to do the math. Now, the reflection coefficient has two mathematically related cousins that we will also cover in brief. The first is return loss, and the second is VSWR, also known as SWR. Now, I've provided a link to a document with all of the equations associated with this uh, topic for your reference in the description of this video. Now, if you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. So let's just pop into looking at the foundational topic of reflection coefficient and its mathematically related cousins, return loss and VSWR. To begin with, we will talk about reflection coefficient. Now, reflection coefficient is a part of a trio of mathematically related entities. There's reflection coefficient, which is the impedance facing entity. There is return loss, which is the power facing entity. And then there is VSWR, or also known as, by most people, it's just plain SWR, is the voltage facing entity. Knowing any one of these, you can calculate the other two. Now, when we're talking about AC, we introduce the reactive components of inductors and capacitors. That means that when we are talking about impedance as opposed to resistance, the math gets a lot more challenging. We have the impedance is equal to the resistive, the purely resistive portion, plus J, the impossible uh, number, J times the reactive portion, this is the imaginary part, this is the real part. And then when we look at this, this is plotted with the real part on the horizontal axis, and this part here will be either on the positive or negative axis depending upon what this sign is. And then when we're talking about the, the magnitude This creates this vector here, and this is the magnitude. So this is R, this is plus Jx, and this is the magnitude of the impedance. So reflection coefficient is a, a, a ratio of impedances. We have the impedance of the load, which is R plus Jx minus the system impedance. And usually this is expressed in terms of an ideal impedance. So if we're talking about a 50 ohm system, we're talking about Z sub O or ZO as being just 50, just the real part. So it's the load, this complex impedance, minus your system impedance, all divided by the load impedance, this is our complex quantity, plus Z sub O, the system impedance. And so we have reflection coefficient represented by the Greek letter gamma is equal to this ratio. Now, just like we were talking here about the magnitude of impedance, it's the same thing because these are, these are uh, complex quantities. We are going to end up with gamma or the reflection coefficient equal to some real part plus some imaginary part like this. 
And so now we can take that and plot that out here on our coordinates. Here's our, our real part of gamma. We have, let's say, a positive Jx. So we have a, a, an imaginary part or reactive part of gamma. That plots out to a point out here. We get a vector that comes out here, which forms, if you look, we have a right triangle here. And this, the length of this is equal to the magnitude of gamma. And if you do standard, standard uh, geometric math, you know that it, this is A, B, C on a, on a right triangle, and C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So we do the same thing here. The magnitude of gamma is equal to the square root of the real portion, r sub gamma, squared, plus the imaginary portion, x sub gamma, squared. And you say, well, why is that important? Because when we want to go and uh, calculate return loss, or we want to calculate VSWR, this is the entity that you're going to need to do that. So understanding these next two entities, return loss and VSWR, uh, they're not strictly required in order to use a Smith chart, but because they're so closely related to the reflection coefficient and because we talk about SWR, in fact, when we do our tour, of the Smith chart, we're going to be talking about an SWR circle on the Smith chart. And so now let's get into return loss, which is the power facing entity. You say, what on earth is return loss? Well, here's, here's how it goes here. We have some entity which has some impedance. We don't know what this impedance is, but we take some amount of power here, and we apply it to whatever this black box is. Now, this completely ignores whether there's anything coming out the other side of this box. It's completely just looking at this side of things. So we send a certain amount of power into the box, and because this box is not a perfect load, some amount of power is going to be reflected back at the source that sent it. So you have power that's being sent in, power that's being returned. Now, if we were to put one watt in, and we were to get one watt back, then the return loss would be zero. Why? Because we're talking about how much power is coming back that I sent out. How much am I losing? How much am I losing? If, if I'm getting back as much as I sent out, then I'm losing, well, nothing. Therefore, the return loss is zero. Now, return loss is in dB, being a power type thing. They do it in dB. So return loss in dB is equal to 10 times the log to the base 10, which is a standard logarithm. So it's 10 times the log of this ratio, the return power divided by the power that's sent out. Now, as you can probably guess, the larger the, the return loss, the better the load is because more power is being absorbed and less power is being reflected back. So if you have a perfect load here, and instead of getting one watt back, you get zero watts back, well then the return loss is gonna be minus infinity. It's going to be an infinite 
number because the log of zero is infinity. And 10 times infinity is infinity. Go figure. So that's return loss. It's a, it, and it can be calculated from your reflection coefficient. And in the document that I have provided a link in the description of this video, I show you how you can do that. Now, let's go on to voltage standing wave ratio or VSWR. As amateur radio operators and experimenters, we often think of VSWR, also known as just plain SWR, in terms of reflected power. The higher the SWR, the more power is being reflected back at our signal source, whether it be a transmitter or a signal generator or whatever. But strictly speaking, VSWR is not actually about reflected power. VSWR stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. And as such, it is a ratio of the maximum voltage over the minimum voltage on a transmission line. Now, it's really hard to actually measure this because you have to have instrumentation that allows you to go along a transmission line measuring the voltages along the way and looking for the maximums and minimums along the entire transmission line. And that is not an easy thing to do. And the, from what I can tell, the equipment is quite expensive. But for those of us that want to think of it in terms of power, this is the lovely equation that you need to be able to use. Now, we, we kind of reuse this part here. It's the power sent, it's the, the square root of the power sent or transmitted divided by the power that is being returned, okay? So this you can reuse top and bottom. So we take that entity, we add one and put it on the top, this same entity, and we subtract one and put it on the bottom. And then we end up with some number, and then we have a colon one. So that might be 2 to 1, 1 1.5 to 1, whatever, but that's the equation. Now, again, you can calculate the VSWR from the uh, reflection coefficient or the return loss. Again, those equations are on that document. But that's the long and the short of VSWR. So there you have it the quick introduction to the reflection coefficient and its mathematically related cousins return loss and VSWR. Now don't forget there is a link to a document with all these equations and more in the description of this video. Now we're ready to dive into a tour of the Smith chart to answer the question what on earth are all of those lines and circles and curves and stuff and things anyway? And that is exactly what I'm planning on doing in my next video in this series. If you have found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. In the meanwhile, thanks so much for watching. Toulouse.